Happy almost Halloween, everyone. Trick or treat. Things that go bump in the night shouldn't include our pets. So you see Haiku and I are here on our doorstep. Um, I guess this is where the trick or treats happen. And we want to make sure that your pets don't pull a Houdini act this Halloween. So think ahead and keep them safe. Oh, he's just about to lay down, but I wanted you to see as he was standing up that great harness he has. We're going to talk about this more on November 12th. It's the headlight harness. Haiku, can you stand up for a minute? I so wanted him to lay down, and now, of course, he's going to stand up. If you stand up, you'll get a treat. Okay, well, we'll try it in a moment. But he's got this great headlight harness on, and that reminds me that when trick-or-treat's happening, it's important that you walk your pets before dark, if at all possible, because those trick-or-treaters come out as soon as it gets dark. However, since it is getting dark earlier these days and staying dark a little later in the morning, the headlight harness is an awesome thing for you to have. And I'll get him to stand back up again so you can see it before we um, close today. But um, I'm going to talk to you more about that on November 12th. It's the most awesome thing because we've tried all kinds of lighted collars over the years and with all of his fur, it just doesn't show. So make sure that's tip number one, that you walk your dogs before the trick-or-treat happens. Um, I know a lot of people may want to bring their pets trick-or-treating, but it isn't always the smartest thing. Uh, those of us that volunteer at animal shelters know that if you wear sunglasses or a baseball cap or a hoodie, um, that's generally a no-no around the animals because it changes your appearance and it can actually appear scary or threatening to them. So um, having on costumes and of course the high squealing um, noises of some of the younger ones can be frightening as well and it can cause your pet to you know, escape your grip. So it isn't the best idea to take them trick-or-treating unless it's in a really controlled situation and he's going to houses that he knows and around kids and costumes that he's familiar with. The second part of that is while you have trick-or-treaters come to your front door asking for candy, you want to make sure that your pets are in a safe area. Some dogs are so sociable, and if you have them by your side on a leash, again, even if they're the best behaved, having them on a leash is a good idea just so that when that doorbell rings, because you know dogs are programmed to bark at it and run to that door, and if it gets open, they may fly out. They may also, you know, be frightened by some of the screaming ghouls or some of the costumes. Additionally, you're going to be handing out candy, and the kids at the door are going to have bags full already, and with their amazing sense of smell that could be enticing to them, your pet could go out the front door. So only the most socialized dog should greet trick-or-treaters at the front door and be on a leash at your side. But for many pets, it's better to have them in a safe, quiet room, especially kitty cats, so that they can't dash out when all the commotion happens. Have them in a safe place, have exercised them and allowed them for their potty breaks ahead of time so they can rest comfortably while all of the activity is happening. Now, I mentioned the treats, and we don't want Halloween to be the kiss of death for your pet. Hard candies, any kind of candy in a wrapper will be swallowed whole, and it can become a choking obstruction, or it can actually be a digestive, a gastrointestinal obstruction. The cell, of, you know, they don't unwrap the cellophane or the foil, they swallow it whole, and it can be very, very dangerous. Additionally, a lot of kids are hoping for chocolate. They're not hoping for that apple or orange, although that's a really good treat for them. I'm so happy he stood back up. Uh, if you'll put his head up, you'll see that headlight. It's bright right now, but you can outside, but you can see that headlight harness will definitely light his way and keep him from stepping in anything dangerous in you as well, as well as allowing you to be seen. But back to the candy thing. Chocolate contains an element called theobromine. Theobromine is both a cardiac stimulant and a diuretic, meaning it speeds up the heart and lungs and it pulls fluid out of the body in the forms of vomiting and diarrhea. So a dog or cat who's had too much chocolate can suffer rapid heart rate and breathing, vomiting, diarrhea, seizures, and even death from doing so. How much is too much? Well, the good news is it does take quite a bit. Um, if you're looking for a formula, it's actually one ounce of milk chocolate per pound of your pet's body weight that could be fatal. But do realize pets are like people. Some are more sensitive to you know, toxins than others, and it doesn't necessarily have to take that much. But that's milk chocolate. So what that means is if a 10-pound cat eats 10 ounces of milk chocolate, it could prove disastrous. 
whereas a 100-pound lab may need to eat 100 ounces. But you know those labs, they love to eat and they can gulp 100 ounces, no problem. As we go up the dark chocolate scale, the darker the chocolate, the higher the theobromine content, meaning it takes less to cause the same ill effects. With dark chocolate, it's basically half an ounce per pound of your pet's body weight. So now that 10 pound kitty cat only has to eat five ounces of dark chocolate to have the same problems, and the lab only 50 ounces. And the most dangerous culprits of all are the baker's powder and chocolate that we may have in our pantries, and even the cocoa mulch that may be around yards or planters. That is only a quarter of an ounce per pet's body weight to cause the harm. And what we must realize is there is no specific antidote for chocolate toxicity. If you get your pet to the veterinarian quickly, most do well. They often feed your pet activated charcoal, which binds to that theobromine and start flushing the system. And then they treat the symptoms, whatever's presenting itself, if it's vomiting, diarrhea, seizures, or so on. Most pets, like I said, if they get to the veterinarian very quickly, do well. The problem is the pet that, you know, found our stash at 9 a.m. and we don't get home till 5 p.m., that we might come home to a deceased pet. So do your best to keep chocolate and all candies this Halloween always out of paws and claws reach to keep them safe. There are so many other healthy treats, and if you're looking for something with a little chocolate edge, um, there are safe, um, the carob that you can get at some pet bakeries, or you can even get yourself, um, is okay for your pets. Okay, so we've talked about keeping them safe, keeping them on leash or back in a safe room when the trick-or-treaters come, and not to take them out trick-or-treating, actually, but to get them out ahead of time and make sure you watch your step as it's getting dark. We've talked about keeping your pets safe, not allowing the kiss of death to get them as well. But we also want them to be safe and um, content as far as the costumes go. And I know some of you out there have the most darling pets that are very tolerant and comfortable dressing up. Mr. Haiku, probably a bandana is about his speed. And even that, when we would have bandanas, um, he would rip them off his sister and brother. So, you know, know your pet. Know what's comfortable for him. Don't just put it on five minutes, the costume, five minutes before you're going to dash out the door for a party or a photo opportunity. Um, get him used to it. Acclimate it. Put it on for a few minutes every day, you know, this week prior to the actual time you're going to have him wear the costume. Make sure the elastic isn't binding, that nothing is covering the face. Really, masks are not appropriate on our pets. They need these sniffers to sniff the world and know where they are, and they need to see. So you don't want anything that's going to drop in the face. Also, be careful about buttons or sequins or anything like that that could be chewed off and consumed. Um, you know, the, it, we want to keep our pets safe. Photo opportunities are great, and I've got our happy little pumpkin here. We haven't carved into a jack-o'-lantern yet, but that's generally our speed, having haiku around the pumpkin. Um, he, he would not be happy with um, a costume, but know your pets. Some will abide by it, but just again, make sure they're not stepping on it and tripping, and that they have access to Answer Nature's Call as well. Now, we were talking about treats a minute ago, and he's being good. I was going to leave this till the end, but I have to remind you that although candy and typical Halloween fare is not appropriate for our dogs and cats, we need to make sure we have something that is. And we recently discovered Petite's Hooked Palmy Tuna Nuggets. And Haiku thinks these are the bomb. Um, I love them because they're one ingredient. They're no additives, no preservatives. It's basically tuna. It comes in a sealed pouch like this, and then you keep it in the refrigerator after. And you can see he's already um, got his ears up to try a little tuna. Now, Akitas love fish. Um, we know kitties do too, and a lot of other breeds as well. It's a great protein for them. It's healthy. It's baked. No preservatives, no additives, one ingredient. It also comes in uh, tuna bone, turkey. So go to Petit, P-E-T-I-Q-U-E, their website. I will make sure it's listed here. It's definitely in my blog. You can see um, he's loving them. I don't have any trouble giving them to him. He thinks they're just terrific. So in combination with these treats and having his headlight harness on, he is set for his own special Halloween.
which will bring me to the conclusion today about our Halloween safety tips, and that's any pet, but in particular, if you have a dark furred cat or dog, please keep them safe in the days leading up to and after Halloween. You know, the Pet Safety Crusader here is never a, an advocate of you leaving pets outdoors, but particularly at this time of year, not only is it getting cold in some climates, um, but, you know, there are some people out there that are malicious and they do more than just a, a harmless prank. And black cats and black dogs in particular may be the target. I'm thrilled that, you know, so many shelters around the country will not adopt out black cats at that this time of year, just particularly for that reason. So as wonderful and loving as our creatures are, the humans that sometimes, um, are, you know, share this planet with them aren't quite as good in kind. So we need to protect our furry family members from those who may have not the best interests at mind. But to end on a happier note, although it's getting a little chilly here in Northwest Georgia and maybe even colder where some of you are, I see some New Yorkers here um, online today, I do realize that there are other parts of the country that it's still warm. So make sure you keep your pets well hydrated and in shade and good ventilation. But those of us where it's starting to get cool, you see Haiku's attention is totally on these um, paw, hooked paw me treats by Petite. Um, if it's getting cool, make sure you're putting those booties on if it's getting icy on the ground to keep the, pet, the paws warm. And make sure that, you know, pets aren't left out without supervision. They never should be, no matter the climate, but especially if it's too hot or too cold for us. We need to be watching our pets and just allow them out there long enough for some exercise and to answer nature's call, but to stay safe and have a very happy Halloween with all of us. Thanks so much as always for tuning in. Check back with me on Thursday and don't forget to uh, check out Petique's P-E-T-I-Q-U-E's website. They have these awesome tuna nuggets, one ingredient. You can see it's fresh, it's wholesome, it's organic. Um, no preservatives or additives. He loves it. It's a great protein packed treat. And then check back with me also on November 12th when we once again show you the headlight harness. Haiku, will you stand up? Show everybody your harness. Come on, stand up. If you want the treat, you got to stand. Oh, he's, you know, at 13, we're getting a little lazy here. Come on, come on, come on. Show everybody your headlight harness. All right, you guys, you got to stay tuned until he stands up. Come on, come on. Let's get up. Let's get up. There we go. He gets the treat. And you can see the great light on this, even though it's already bright here um, today, you can see how well the light would show his way when it's dark. And I'll also show you later the great reflection when we talk about this more so that not only can we see where we step, but we can be seen by others. Thanks again. Have a very safe and happy Halloween, everybody. And please keep your pets safe as well. Bye-bye for now.